What's going on, everybody? C4 here, and welcome to episode one of the Oakland Raiders, because it's Oakland for right now, the Oakland Raiders franchise mode here in Madden 20. We did the introduction video yesterday. I said if it broke 500 likes, I'd drop this one today back, you know, get this series rolling. And today we are going to get through the preseason. We have four preseason games, uh, the Rams, Cardinals, Packers, and Seahawks, and we're going to set up everything for a week one home matchup against the Denver Broncos. As you may notice, we did a little bit of uh, changes here. I am actually going to be the owner, Mark Davis, for the time being. We're going to go here. We're going to do it. We're going to relocate, and we're actually going to move the Raiders to Las Vegas. Originally, I stated in the introduction episode that I didn't know that you could like you know, make another character when you do a cloud franchise. Every time I tried to do it last year, it would freeze up on me, but I tested it. It works. So unfortunately, we aren't going to have any of the scenarios till like week seven or week eight, like once we just, you know, finalize everything for the Las Vegas move. But at least now we're going to officially be the Las Vegas Raiders next season. So, you know, you know it, it keeps it more realistic, I suppose. I don't, I don't know how you can really word it, but here we go. That move is made. We're Mark Davis. We're Mr. Bull Cut himself as we get ready for the preseason. Also, to our team... We have added a big time notable player that you guys had informed me. Actually got signed and picked up by the Raiders. He's coming in for training camp. What's his likelihood of making the roster? Probably not amazing, but Ronald Ollie. Have you ever seen Last Chance You? He was the star of maybe the first two seasons, or at least the first season. Remember, you know, it was Mid Mid Wagner. Mid Wagner asked him why he didn't have any pens or papers because he spent his money on headphones. Remember this guy? I mean, he's bottom of the depth chart here at D-Tackle, rookie at a nickel state, but he could be a prime candidate for the practice squad, so that is something I would keep an eye on. Also, we hinted that we would flip Chris Warren, who's a power back, to the fullback position. He's a 68. He's a big-time upgrade over Keith Smith. I mean, we'll give Keith Smith an opportunity in the preseason, but knowing that we're going to be able to save that much salary cap, it's almost a foregone conclusion that he will be one of the first roster cuts. And we'll go with the big freak power back out of Texas, Chris Warren the third. From that, before we get into training camp in the preseason, we still have two roster spots. I want to have the most opportunities out there to, you know, to all these guys to try to make our team. We could, you know, try to look at bringing in a big time player in free agency. We still have two free spots. You know, Eric Berry at strong safety. You got my, you know, Matt Bryant, Des Bryant, Safarian Jenkins, Pierre Garçon. Antonio Gates, Trey Boston. There's some there's some all right available free agents here, but I already identified two targets, guys that are developmental players, but look like, you know, in this preseason, they might have an opportunity to make some plays. So first up, I'm looking at Amara Darbo from Michigan. I think he spent some time with the Seattle Seahawks. He's 25, 68 overall, 6'2", 215, 91 speed, 93 acceleration. Comes in with 82 catching, 79 catch and traffic, 83 spec, 74 short route running, 76 medium route running, 75 deep route running, 74 release, and 86 jumping. So across the board, fairly impressive stats for Darbo. So we're going to bring him on on a one-year deal and see if he can you know, make some moves during the preseason. And then we're just trying to find you know special team type threats. So I was able to identify here Jalen Myrick, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, 95 speed. 95 acceleration, 5'10", 200 pounds, an interesting option for the back end on this defense. So we're looking to bring in Jalen Myrick as well on a one-year deal. So for our opening preseason game against the Rams, a couple battles that I want to keep an eye on. And pretty much the biggest battle I think that we need to keep an eye on for the Raiders is not going to be the quarterback. It's going to be the running back battle. Doug Martin, an established veteran, wasn't too shabby last year. The muscle hamster is going to want to retain his starting job, but Josh Jacobs the first round selection out of Alabama has a lot of hype and you know, the fan base wants Josh Jacobs to start. The fan base wants to see if they're going to have a next superstar running back with no more Marshawn Lynch. He's kind of similar to the style of Marshawn Lynch in terms of runner more so than Doug Martin. So that is going to be a big time matchup to keep an eye on at wide receiver. I mean, things are pretty much set. We have Antonio Brown who will go all over the field. Tyra Williams will be our deep threat. Renfro will play in the slot. So I guess that, you know, the next wide receiver spot will be up for grabs, be it Darbo, who we just brought in. You got Marcel Aitman, the speed from J.J. Nelson. But, you know, decently well-rounded stance from Ryan Grant, who is going to be the guy. At tight end, there is a chance that if Foster Moreau, who we're kind of biased to, 
can play very well. He could potentially upset Luke Wilson for the starting tight end spot. Offensive line is, is dead set. Defense, be, you know, we're not the most talented defense. There's a chance at right end if we get some good play from, say, Max Crosby, the rookie out of Eastern Michigan. He could surplant Arden Key, but I think generally speaking, the defensive line and, and the defense in general, the front seven is you know, pretty much predetermined. Uh, in the secondary, uh, I'm looking definitely for Trayvon Mullen to, uh, to step it up a little bit. You also have Isaiah Johnson, converted wide receiver from Houston. I'm going to put him here at the bottom of the depth chart. Uh, those guys are going to be competing for snaps. We're still looking for an outside wide corner here. Gary on Conley's one. You're pro we're going to most likely have Nevin Lawson as our nickel, but who's going to be the next outside? Mullen, Nick Nelson, Isaiah Johnson. Those are going to be the guys we're going to give the biggest opportunity to this offseason, this preseason, this training camp. Uh, free safety is Joyner. Strong safety will be Kyle Joseph. We're going to rock with Jonathan Abram as our sub linebacker. That's gonna be a good way to get the rookie involved. Plus he has the big time hit power that he could be forced on a lot of fumbles. And we're running that nickel set. So there are plenty of battles to focus on, but in my opinion, none bigger than the running back battle between Josh Jacobs and Doug Martin. Now let's get into the preseason. Let's go defense, third and 11 starters are in. So this is you know, as good of an offense as we're gonna face in the preseason, get a good idea where we're at. Mohurst closes the pocket, and down he goes. Benson Mayoa gets the sack on Jared Goff. Ben, but did not break on the defense. Impressive stand. In the red zone here, second and eight. Gives the ball to Josh Jacobs. Perfect start for the Raiders. Josh Jacobs goes in untouched on his first offensive drive in the National Football League. Shows off tremendous vision, great explosion. There were some concerns about the speed, but I mean, when you rock the Alvin Kamara arm tape, you gotta be a little, that adds like plus three straight up sprint speed. Let's go Raiders, go ahead lead. Backups are in, don't matter. Jalen Rashard, usually the receiving back, getting some opportunities here in the preseason to show that he can run between the tackles. Caps off another excellent drive from Mike Glennon and the Raiders offense. Well, another defensive opportunity has presented itself. Bortles, the boat, in for the Rams. We still have some defensive starters out there. Look at him running like a chicken with his head cut off. Gets the first down. Disappointing from the Raiders defense. But what can you do when you're going up against the boat? Oh, that's just that's just we got we got phase. This this is a this is a young defense that knows they're going up against Blake Bortles. So they're, it, they're in their own heads right now. They're like, oh my gosh, Blake Bortles, can you believe I'm actually playing a snap against the boat? And that, that's what happens. You lose you know, a little bit of a brain fart there. Easy walk-in touchdown for the Rams. Oh, Redfro, he's aggressive, he's aggressive. Jukum, Hunter Redfro, trying to establish himself as the clear starter at slot, 47 yards from Mike Glennon. I mean, we saw that for all damn day. 20, Hill, just terrible coverage. What kind of lack? Like, that should be cut. That is the most lackadaisical coverage ever. He literally was like, meh, meh. And then we knew, we knew all along that 26 was going to be way too aggressive. And Renfro, very impressive touchdown. And that's the most white guy celebration of all time. Point to God, because without God, nothing's possible. Well, first of all, through God, all things are possible. So jot that down. There we go. Congratulations. Does anybody know how old Sean McVay is? How old was Sean McVay when he lost in the preseason to the Raiders? Can anyone get me that information as the Raiders get off to a 1-0 start? It's the preseason, but for a franchise, especially, you know, from the Khalil Mack trade, the Mari Cooper trade, everything that happened in the offseason. I mean, generally, you know, you have the relocation looming. A bunch of people in the Raiders fan base weren't satisfied with the three first-round picks. You know, a clone for Al, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Abram. Any momentum is good momentum at this point. And a 21 to 16 victory off the rip in the battle of Cali. We'll take that, man. Looking at our team's performances, uh, Mike Glennon, you know, he was all right. I mean, both QBs were fine. No turnovers. That's all you really want to see. You want everyone to be healthy and you don't want to see any sloppy plays. So we didn't get any sloppy plays from our quarterbacks. Josh Jacobs uh, pretty much established himself as a lead back. I mean, from a yards per carry average. Wasn't amazing, but that big, long rushing touchdown was probably play of the game. 
Jalen Mashard had a rushing touchdown as well. J.J. Nelson, 4 for 50. Hunter Renfro, 4 for 91 and a tutty. So that's that's pretty damn good for Hunter Renfro for a rookie to establish himself. Marcus Joyner, eight tackles. Good debut performance, even if it is just the preseason in a Raiders uniform. Three sacks from Benson Mayo. Uh, cool. This guy might be carving himself out a nice little roll there. So we open it up with a dub. Quick turnaround, healthy. Let's get into preseason game number two. Week two of the preseason, we're welcoming Kyler Murray. We're not welcoming, we're going into their backyard. We're going to kick that damn door in. We're going to show them that Kyler Murray is overrated. Oh my God. Why is he so fast and why isn't that the speed we saw with Kyler Murray when we did the Cardinals rebuild the other day? I mean, from a standpoint, if they're not at least going to have the mobile QB sim stats right, at least they kind of play like a scrambling quarterback, but we didn't see that when we played with Kyler Murray. How do I make Kyler Murray play like that? Cardinals are right on, the, you know, pretty much in the money zone here. Let's collapse that pocket to here. Whitehead user sack brings down Kyler Murray, and the Cards are going to have to settle for a field goal. The rookie at Oklahoma is not happy with that as a big play from Tahir Whitehead. Oh, we got AB. We have our X Factor. Rack them up. We desperately needed a little bit of offense and got some momentum for the starters against the Cardinals starters on defense. Is that a real big accomplishment? Probably not. But again, like I stated with the first preseason win, any momentum is good momentum right now for this Raiders franchise. Second half, fourth quarter, we're on the one, first and goal. Backups are in, but we got Josh Jacobs in the backfield. Jingleheimer Schmidt powers his way in, second touchdown of the preseason. And he's kind of starting to run away with the running back battle. Oh, that's a huge catch, Red Fro. I didn't even know it made that. 33 yards. Face, man. Even though he's 48 and a rookie. That is huge. In traffic, Mike Glennon throws it between two DBs. That is huge. Red Fro is making a lot of money this preseason. Third and 39. We've pretty much played ourselves out of field goal. I was going to like... I mean, we got speed with Nelson on the outside. I was going to go for the win anyways. I mean, who plays for the tie in the preseason? But, oh, come on. We would have had that fourth down. We need some Mike Glennon magic on fourth and a mile. Will Forver, it's like I said, you go, to the, you go to overtime in the preseason. A win would be nice, but that's just you know, more opportunities for potential injury. Let's go. Let's go, Glennie. Ah, uh, it's not from there. Try to make a play out the backfield. Didn't work. Gruden. I mean, that's the most Gruden thing ever, getting triggered over a preseason loss. There's not much you could have done there. Uh, just ate some bad sacks. There's a reason why Mike Glennon is a career backup. But when our starters were going against their starters, felt pretty good, especially the couple defensive stands we had there. Big sack from Mohurst on Kyler Murray. He felt him. Kyler Murray felt the warmth, the presence of Maurice Hurst as we fall to the Arizona Cardinals and fall to 1-1 one one in the preseason, 20-17. to 17. Looking at the box score for the Raiders, Derek Carr pretty much on point. Touchdown, clean game, only two incompletions. Josh Jacobs gets another touchdown. Foster Moreau, eight catches, 97 yards. Renfro had a really, really big catch. A.B. had a long touchdown run. So, I mean, pretty much everything you want to see from the offense should make you fairly happy. Uh, we got a sack and a half from Mohers, a sack from Abram, a sack from Tahir Whitehead, an interception from Daryl Worley. He was probably half in the bag, but kudos to him for getting a turnover as we falter the one and one in the preseason. All right, we got an offensive opportunity here. We've had two offensive turnovers, but finally they make an appearance. Third and seven. Okay. We got Renfro with a tremendous cut. Hits the spin, hits the juke, and brings the ball up to the six-yard line. Carr has two interceptions on the day, so a touchdown here will be huge to get him out of that funk. Third and goal. Um, let's get Renfro to run a... Pretty much Renfro is only ever going to run slants anytime we play with them. 
Oh, we get the back running back Richard. I was just I uh, didn't throw it behind him. You have to you throw it in front of him. We're gonna go for it, man. Here's a little field goal. We have two picks already. Two picks in the first half. That is not good. We need sub something, anything positive for Derek Carr. So let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And he actually just goes ahead and gets sacked by Zadarius Smith. Come on, big chest, second and goal on the 12 and big chest. I just couldn't get in. All right, C4 special time. See how the Raiders can execute a C4 special. The first of the series, we got Josh Jacobs. So far, our offensive line has done a terrible job. It's basically inside. Our guards are getting absolutely mauled. But Josh Jacobs takes the C4 special in, gets finally something positive for the Raiders, and his third rushing touchdown of the preseason. Well, that was ugly. Um, I don't really want to look at the score of that one because, you know, everyone knows the third preseason game is usually your most important preseason game. It's your dress rehearsal. You play your starters for three quarters. We're not up against a legitimate playoff contender. I don't know if we can call the Packers right now a Super Bowl contender, but a legitimate playoff contender, a big dog in the East. Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, pretty good offensive line, Bakhtiari. And we got smoked 44-6. to six. We are not, you know... They are who we thought they were, and we are who they think we are. Not a very good team. Derek Carr, through two preseason games, looked pretty good. And then this one, an absolute stinker. No touchdowns, two interceptions. Glennon was garbage. It's not like Glennon's even, you know, really has an opportunity to start, but he also was pretty bad. Uh, we got a rushing touchdown for Josh Jacobs, and Hunter Renfro continues to stay hot throughout the preseason. Those are really the only two positives we can take from the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, Joyner, nine tackles. He's been all over the field for us. Couple half sacks there, uh, interception from Trayvon Mullen. So that's good. That's good confidence. You know, when you get you know a 40 bomb dunked on you, at least a turnover is something. As we enter the final preseason game. All right, third and three. Still a three. Lots of threes up there. And we're in the fourth quarter. Let's try to get something here. Game's up for grabs. The win would be a win. And we go with Seth Harris. And how is that not a touchdown, man? I mean, it's a fresh set of downs, but that got to be a tutty. Hey, there we go. That's the best kind of touchdown. DeAndre Washington gets tackled. He was short, but he gets tackled in the end zone for the opening touchdown of this game early in the fourth quarter. Victory formation. Ugly game. 10-5. Looking like... Like a high-scoring soccer match. But we'll take it to go to 500 on the preseason. Two and two. Look at those shoulders! My God! Kill it! Kill it! That is not a human! That was terrifying. All right, so we got a win. It was an ugly win. First touchdown won. Our special teams were pretty good, but uh, this is the big part. The big part of the episode is going to be the cuts. Who made the roster? Who did not? I, you know, I want to see all the depth guys look at the stats make some informed decisions build up our practice squad before i send you guys out of here for today so look at the final stats i mean glennon was i mean we didn't have any turnovers i guess there's a positive there washington got tackled in into the end zone to get a touchdown but that was pretty good martin was just not good we went into this preseason with a big question to be who is going to be that top dog in the backfield and it looks like it will be first round pick out of alabama Josh Jacobs leading the charge. Renfro has been simply sensational. Our best player on either side of the ball throughout this preseason. Earned himself a starting gig. Joiner's made a lot of tackles as well. Uh, we got two sacks on the day. A couple TFLs. Another turnover. We got an interception from Markwell Lee. As uh, it's big time, man, everyone. That was their final opportunity to show that they deserved an opportunity to make this Raiders roster. Let's make the final cuts and get this roster ready for week one. So look at our stats just to even find maybe who had standout performances. Neither quarterback was particularly strong, but Derek Carr will be our starter. Looking at the backfield, Josh Jacobs far and away had the better stats. So we'll be a backfield led by Josh Jacobs and Jalen Mishard as our receiving back. Hunter Renfro was our big time performer as well as Foster Moreau. So two guys that we identified at the very beginning that were going to be influential rookies for the Raiders this season. AB had a touchdown. I mean, other than that, we didn't get a whole lot of big-time production from some of the depth guys. 
Uh, in terms of sacks given up, I mean, this guy, Parker, six sacks. Oh, my God. We need to find some you know, potential alternatives here on the open market. Trent Brown giving up three sacks in the preseason. After to get that ridiculous contract from the Patriots. Colt, six sacks total from our two starters at tackle. That does not bode well for the future of this team. But, hey, shout out to Richie Cagnido and Mr. Uh, Rodney Hudson for not... Uh, you know, it's the coming to this garbage play. Joiner had a lot of tackles there. Eight TFLs from Pharrell. That was a pretty okay uh, preseason for him. Five sacks from Mayo. Owa, so, I mean, he's kind of came out of nowhere. He wasn't really on our radar whatsoever. And he's had a big preseason. A couple picks there. Let's look for tackles. What did uh, some of the some of the more... Where's our dude? Did he even show up? Where's Ron Ollie? He was too busy getting headphones. Instead of showing up to games and making plays. I mean, there's no guys that we identified that were on the bubble that really are standing out here. It's just pretty much, you know, our, our starters played well and our backups were backups. So, all right, let's try our best to thin this roster down. We got 22 cuts to make. Then we got to build up our practice squad. All right. Good practice, team. Okay, it's time for the easiest part of any coach's job. The cuts. Now, while I wasn't able to cut everyone I wanted to, I have cut a lot of you. Wendell is cut. Rudy is cut. Janie, you're gone. Steven, I like your hustle. That's why it was so hard to cut you. Congratulations. The rest of you made the team. <sighs> Except you, you, and you. So we moved on from a couple other good players. We have four open roster spots on our final 53 before I preview to you guys our... Uh, complete roster as we go in. But there were a couple signings that we've talked about extensively on the channel uh, as potential targets for you guys to go after in your franchise modes that have just slipped through the cracks and are here now live and in charge for your franchise mode. So we're starting with Emmanuel Hall, the wide receiver uh, from the Chicago Bears practice squad. We are going to actually sign him and promote him to our main squad. Shelton Gibson was another player we talked about in depth. That could be a nice playmaker for you, but we'll just opt out for one wide receiver at this point. Uh, next up at guard, we have a member on the Lions practice squad, Bo Ben Shuel. Uh, I want to just get a little bit younger on our offensive line and get a guy that might be able to develop into something, so we'll bring him in. We have an outside linebacker. We've talked about him a lot. Kylie Fitz, he was a member of Pink Slips last season. Really intriguing playmaker. Gives us some options at outside linebacker. Maybe we can convert him to defensive end. So yet again, we'll poach another player from the Chicago Bears practice squad. And we're actually going to finish it up here at D-Tackle. Looking at... Where is he? Where is he? He's on the Bengals. Andrew Brown. Uh, a guy that we identified when we're looking at some OP players you could bring in. Very well-rounded, especially from an athletic standpoint. We'll have him come in and add some more depth to our D-line. So look at oh, our number one OP player to get is just sitting here. I'm I'm going back to revitalize the career of Obi Melifonwu for the Raiders. So here's how our practice squad is shaping up, and surprisingly enough, we got a lot of players we've been talking about in a lot of our hype videos. We got Ratley, wide receiver from the Browns. We got Conklin here at tight end. Traymond Smith, a corner from the Kansas City Chiefs that has very high catching. Natrell Jamerson, really nice corner from the Packers. Austin Prohl, Prohl 316, baby. If you guys remember Pink Slips, I could not pass up on that. We got Tolliver, Jimmy Moreland. I hyped him up in real life a lot during the draft process. Out of James Madison. Quinton Bell's an athletic freak. We got Ron Ollie. And look at this. Steven Denmark, 6'3", 220. Freak athlete, 94 acceleration. I think he has something like 97 jumping for a guy that's that big. Right, now he, he was originally, I think, on the Chicago Bears. And look, he has, he has one of those uh, hidden dev traits. So he's, he has at least a star. There, this is a guy that if you could put in the work, you are going to be able to develop and grow him into something special. So, you know, the minute we can free up one more roster spot, I'm going to put him on the main roster so that we could start working on, uh, you know, unveiling that dev trait. So that's that. We do need to finish things up by naming our captains. I mean, we're going to carry over Rodney Hudson. We're going to carry over Derek Carr, but we still have a couple more spots. So we got to go with Mr. Big Chest. It would only be right. He's going to be one of the leaders of the locker room. Even though his reputation is not at an all-time high right now, you know, he still is, you know, a big-time vocal type guy. Mo Hurst, gone through a lot of adversity. I think he has earned 
his stripes, even though he's very young in the league, to be one of our team captains. Um, Vontez Perfect, you know, vocal, but he's the type of guy that, you know, had some had some issues in the past with Antonio Brown, but clearly they've been able to work past that as far as we know right now. So why not make him one of our team leaders? And I think to finish it off, if you're going to make Vontez Perfect the captain, I think you also need to look at this man. The, lead, the, you know, the leader of the locker room already came to speak to John Gruden, Richie Incognito, as our final team captain. We've got a long, lot of strong characters there representing the Oakland Raiders as we get ready for game one of the regular season at home against the Denver Broncos. But that will be next episode. We'll probably do two games per. I don't know if you guys want to just see more, but I feel like two games per, at least for right now, will be a great pace to set for this franchise mode. So thank you guys for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to crush the likes. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting for a thousand, but at least 500 likes per video for the time being helps me out a lot. And uh, until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, well you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never I'm way too clever Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent I'm doing it big, way too persistent I'm taking your bitch, he